just uh, make you realize you've been to church. So if you leave with a lot of energy, here's the deal. You've not worshipped. Uh, so, man, here's the deal. I, I want to pray over you real quick. And uh, I'm going to try to get this message. I don't know what God's going to do. It's just been one of those Sundays. I don't know. But whatever he wants, I, I, I'm just going to decrease. And the Bible says, as I decrease, he'll increase. So, uh, man, let's just pray and uh, ask God to bless his word. He's already blessed his worship. And uh, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Father God, wow. You just keep messing with me. You keep shocking me, Lord. You, uh, I believe that's how much you love worship. That it never ends. It never stops. And God, I, I'm, I'm trying to listen to your voice. I'm trying to, God, to take heed to what you're wanting me to do. But sometimes, Lord, I just sit back in awe of the goodness of God. So, Lord, I thank you for these wonderful people here today. I pray, dear God, that the word will go forward and it will not return void. I pray, dear God, that it's sharper in any two-edged sword, that it separates the spirit from the soul, dear God, that it reaches down to the very bone marrow in our body, dear God, and, Lord, it heals, it delivers, and it sets free today. God, I pray that you use me as a vessel, as an instrument, dear God, of the Most High. Lord, I pray, dear God, that, Lord, there be no word that I say is from me. Every word is instructed from the throne room of God. Lord, I believe I've studied this week, and I wanted to study to show myself approved. So, Father God, as I break this bread of life, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Less of us and more of you. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for being here today. Um, Listen in, if you're listening by radio or internet or podcast, I want to say thank you for that. Um, we're getting a lot of hits uh, through internet. And I truly believe i got a word today. I know I say this all the time, but I really believe that I, I've got a word, a now word, for you here today. Today's word, I'm going to go ahead and preface this just a little bit. Um, if you didn't wear your steel toe to shoes, you probably should have wore them. Because I'm going to tell you, God spanked me all week on the sun. And uh, if you're, if you're taking notes, I want you to take notes of this. I really believe this is a word for Elkhorn. Um, back in the first, uh, the 13 days of January, Dr. Steve Ayers spoke a word out of Matthew chapter 25. And that's where I'm going to be going today is Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to start in verse 14. And I'm going to read down just about verse 18. And we're going to talk about it just a little bit. But listen, how many of you believe God really and truly wants to bless you? Now listen to me. Don't you dare raise your hand if you're sitting there saying, well, I don't know. That's just the way it is. No, listen to me. How many of you truly, 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 truly believe, truly persuaded, no doubt, no unbelief, I'm talking about you made your mind up that God wants to bless you. That's about right. That's about the way. I'm serious now. Listen. I'm not, I'm not saying that's because your hand's not down, because here's the deal, you just don't know. You're, you're just, you're listening to the wrong voice. There's something going on in your life where you hardened your heart. So listen to me, I, I want to give you a word that I really believe God wanted me to give you guys. You cannot be double-minded. You cannot be double-minded. Write it down, you cannot be double-minded. That's why people think they're saved one day and lost the next. That's exactly right. That's why people say, well, I can live the way I want to live and act the way I want to act and everything's going to be all right. No, it is not. Listen, a lot of Christians, a lot of churches, the reason why they're not prospering, I'm so thankful this house is full that it's going up the stairwell and all the way to the back, and I'm so thankful for that. But watch this, Elkhorn. God is not finished with us. We will never settle for 500 and be satisfied. Never, ever, ever. If you want to do that, you've got the wrong pastor. I can't shoot you no straight. That's true. If you're selling for just 400, 500, and you're happy, I'm the wrong man for this church. Because I believe there's people lost and dying and going to hell. I believe that as long as we're breathing, there's hope for this world. And I believe when we as God's people really, really, really believe this Bible, it will come to pass. One day, that last person is going to walk that aisle. And the horn will sound. One day, the last person may be here today. 
will walk this aisle, make their mind up, and quit being undone, and they'll say, God, come into my heart and save my soul. And when they do that, the, I'm telling you, the horn will sound. So watch this. You've got to be fully persuaded. Do not, I wrote this down, I want you all to write this down. Do not settle for less. I wasn't a good football player, but when I played, I played. When I went in, he said, Rafferty, it's time to go in. I played. Now, if I got ran over, I'd get up and I'll say, your time's next. But here's the thing. I've made my mind up. This Bible's real. I, you can't change my mind. I'm fully persuaded that what God said, he will do. If God said, I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall arise, I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall arise. God says, you give to me, I'll press it down. I'll shake it together. And it will run over because that's what God said. Either we believe it or let's go home. It's time that the church gets squared up. It's time that the church quits being double-minded. Either God be for us or he's against us. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. There is no riding the fence. It is that you're not good one day and you're going to heaven and you act like a sinner the next day and you're going to hell. Watch this. We all deserve to go to hell. Yeah. But thank God I'm persuaded that when I say, God, come into my heart, save my soul, forgive me of my sins, I'm born again. I'm persuaded of that. Watch this. I don't care what you believe. I believe I'm born again. You're not going to change my mind on what God said in this Bible. And when you get like that, you become dangerous. You become so dangerous because people will take a verse and they'll say, well, here's the way I interpret it. Watch this. God don't care. God don't care how you interpret it. When God said Peter walked on water, I don't care if it was an inch or five foot deep. He walked on water. Now, listen to me. The reason why I'm preaching like this and giving you a preface like this is because some of you are double minded. Back and forth, back and forth. I don't know. It's on today. It's off today. Katy Perry's back in the house. But I'm going to tell you today, I believe, if we believe what the Bible says, God told me this last Sunday. He said, if you'll stand up, Brian, and you preach it, I'll back it up with my Bible. Listen, all you've got to do is stand up, and God's already up. All you've got to do is open your mouth, and God's already put a word in your spirit. We got to quit giving excuses why the churches are dying. We got to quit giving excuses why things ain't working out. The reason why things are not going the way they're going is because there's unbelief in the house. So today, welcome to church. Matthew chapter 25. Y'all there? Say amen. I'm going to start in verse 14. This is red letters to all you theologians. This is God. Whether it's black or red, it's God. You just need to read it. Verse 14. Turn your neighbor and say, this is going to be good. Now I say, this is going to be real good. Now I ask him, are you listening? Come on. Here we go, verse 14. Here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? All right, don't y'all die on me, good gracious. For the kingdom of heaven. Listen to me. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Listen. Who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents. I guess I'm going to blow y'all's mind today. To another two and to another one. To every man. According to his ability. Do not forget that verse. According to his or her ability. And straightway took his journey. Look in verse 16. Then he had received the five talents. He got it. Everybody say he received it. Yes, yes. He went and what did he do? He traded it <laughs> with the same. With the same. And made another five talents. And likewise, he had received two, and he likewise received two. He also gained another two. Verse 18, scary verse. 
But he that received one went and digged in the earth. He dug a hole and laid and hid his Lord's money. Everybody say money. money. God, listen to me, there are more verses in the Bible talking about money than there are more verses in the Bible talking about hell. Listen to me. I'm going to help you because I really believe these teachings are going to help get all these lies and things away from the church. Notice verse 14. It said, God delivered unto them his what? Come on. Look at it. Look at the big Bible. Don't take any time to go to sleep. Come on. His what? What did God deliver unto them? His goods. His goods. Notice it's God's goods. We need to understand something. Y'all listen to me. We need to understand something. All we are is God's servant. Listen to me. All you are, whether or how big you think you are, or what title you have over your name, or your doctor, or PhD, I don't care what you think you are. All we are is God's servant. Now listen to me. This is going to help you. God owns it all. How many of y'all know that? God owns, he owns the blue chairs. He owns this building. He owns that property over there. He owns all the acres that we own. He owns the hair on your head. And the one that's not, don't have no hair on your head. He owns your scalp. He, he owns it all. God is just trusting me and you and Elkhorn, the men of God and the women of God, with his goods. With his goods. It belongs to God. The Bible says that the earth and all its fullness, Greg, belongs to the Lord. Everything, everything belongs to the Lord. So here's what we've messed up in Scripture. We've messed up in Scripture by this. God gave one man five talents. Everybody say five. five. That does not mean, Daniel, I've heard this all of my life. I've heard it in seminary. I've heard it all over. It says that God gave one man five talents. This does not mean he gave him a preaching talent. This does not mean, Ginger, he gave him a teaching talent. Or, Greg, it does not mean he gave him a worship pastor talent. What it means, according to the Greek and according to your Bible, when God gave one man five talents, he gave him $5,000. Oops. 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 He gave another man two talents, which he gave him how many? Two thousand dollars, and he gave one man one thousand dollars. He gave him one talent. A talent equaled a thousand. So listen, I'm going to ask you something. How many talents do you have? See, when the church says how much talents you have, they're ready to put them in a position that they're not ready for. My God, we put people in positions with a title that they're not ready for. And then the next thing you know, you've got a church with an immature pastor who can't take the heat and he makes a mistake. And then the church who is unruly and make a bad decision because they didn't pray, they put, made a prejudgment, put a man in a position he is not ready for, they fire him. Oh, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. If I fail, it's because you failed. If you fail... It's because your pastor has failed. When the church realizes we're in this together, no matter what, red and yellow, black and white, we're the church. No matter Hispanic, it doesn't matter. We are the church. Your talent, my talent, it may make two, but we got some talents in this church. Now watch this. Now watch this. I don't want you to miss this. God gave according to their ability. I want you to write this down. Ability means God will only give you what you can handle. Listen to me. Please listen to me this morning. God will give you only, only what you can handle. What you can handle. See, listen. God wants to give you more and trust us with more. But first, we must pass the test. You must pass the test. I've done a statistical study. It's going to blow your mind. 97% of people who win their lottery are bankrupt and divorced and have less than what they started with before. 97% of people who win the lottery end up bankrupt, divorced, and less than what they had when they started. Why? 
they can't handle it. They can't handle it. Some of you are praying to be a millionaire. Watch this. You can't handle it. I'm going to be so bold this morning, I can't handle it. You know how hard that is for me to sit and tell you? Because I would really, how many of y'all like to have a million dollars? If your hand's not up, you need to be saved. <laughs> Everybody wants money. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 that money is the answer for all things. You, we've got to have money to make this church run. We've got to. Our electric bill, y'all, I'm telling you, it will blow your mind. I'm talking about sometimes $2,000 a month. Man, yeah, what about all that money you got? It's going to keep these lights on. Yeah. It's going to keep the lights on. Yes, y'all pay my salary. Yes, you pay Greg, and you pay people's salaries. Thank you. But the Bible says that the man of God should live by the word of God. Hallelujah. I don't believe in part-time Christianity. I believe in full-time ministry. Notice what I said. So what I'm telling you today is this. 97% of people who win the lottery are not ready for the lottery. They get all this money and they blow it. How many of y'all ever blown some money? Yeah. Watch this. I wrote this down. Money isn't the problem. Y'all watch me. Money is not the problem. The management of the money is the problem. Watch this. We can have millions and millions of dollars in this church. But if you don't have the right finance team, they're going to make a boo-boo. And not honey boo-boo. They're going to make a boo-boo. And everybody's going to go, what's going on? They would not know how to handle the money. But if we got the right finance team and the right leaders in the church with the ability that God has given us, we'll make godly decisions and godly choices. Hallelujah, that preached. I know y'all may not like it, but it preached. See, the Bible says, for the love of money is the root of evil. The love, the love, the love. Making money is no, not a big deal. I want y'all to have your cars. I want you to own your cars. I want you to own your house. I want you to, and y'all need to receive this stuff as I preach it. But I'm telling you, you've got to have management in your life. And I'm learning this management stuff even as I'm preaching to you. See, there's nothing wrong with money. But if money has you, if you want to work to, than to go to church, you're a slave to money. Oh, I'm preaching now. If all you think about is greenbacks, woo, it quiet up in here. If all you think about is money, your heart is not right. See, God says, I delight in my prosperity of my children. But God is not going to bless you for you to make a... Hey, I'll be good. God's not going to bless us if we're not good stewards. Golly, y'all help me preach. It is so true, say, Brian, I'm waiting for the hurrah-rah, the bang-bang, shang-shang. I don't know what you came to church for, but I'm giving you a word today straight from the Lord. A lot of you cannot be a millionaire because you're not, you don't have the ability to be a millionaire. Hallelujah. God will give you according to your ability. God will give you according to your ability. Ten years ago, I was not ready to pastor Elkhorn Baptist Church. So God picked me up. He moved me to another city, another town, another church. He grew me up just a little bit. And then he put me back, and now I'm here. I felt that. Uh, but 10 years ago, I didn't have the ability. I wasn't ready to handle the demand of a church this size. And still today, I'll be honest with you. There are times they say don't ever resign on a Monday. And y'all are looking at me act like, well, I can't believe he preaches like this. I'm preaching truth. It's just time that, man, we hear the truth. Listen to me. I wrote this down. God could get some people completely out of debt today, and by tonight, you'll be completely back in debt again. <laughs> Bro, 
for our guests that are going. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Hang with me just for a moment. Now, I'm going to speak something I've never preached about in this church. And to come on my fifth year of ministry. Five years. I've not preached on this word. Now, this word's going to mess y'all up this morning. It's a big, scary word. I've not preached on it for five years. And so this morning, hang on to your seat. Buckle down. And I'm getting ready to preach a word to you, some truth over you. Are you ready this morning for this one little word I'm going to give you? Watch this. It's going to bless you. It's going to change you. Huh, Glenn? This is going to mess you up in the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people don't like this word because they don't do it. A lot of people are scared of this word because they say, I don't have enough of it. A lot of people, are y'all all right? I know I'm messing with y'all. Should have gone, where's it going? I don't know. A lot of people don't understand this concept, but it's a beautiful thing. A lot of people, they, they, they pray this prayer, God bless me and bless me indeed. But they don't understand this one concept, so they're remaining broke. What if I told you this morning, I wrote this down in my notes. What if I told you this morning that God himself, God himself is wanting to use you, wanting to use you, Haywood Reiner, to show people that God is good. He wanted, to, he wanted to use you just for a season in your life that you did not understand. But he, he used you, coach, to show people that God still heals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you are going through a season in your life. You don't understand nothing about pain. Lord, why? Why? Why, Lord? And can I tell you, because God trusts you. Listen to me. God trusts you where he's got you. If he did not trust you where he has you, you wouldn't be here today. God trusts you where he's got you. God will test you to see if he can trust you. Woo! Preach a! Hey! hey. Yeah. So are you sure? I'm going to ask again before I preach this. And if y'all don't like it, I'm going to preach it anyway. Y'all need to leave. How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all want to prosper? How many of y'all want God's good? I, I read it, right? Matthew chapter 25. There it says, God's good. All the time. All the time, time's good. Here's this one word from you to the adult to your pastor. That changed my life forever. Tithe. Tithe. Somebody say tithe. Now the ones who are mad is because you don't do it. The ones who are mad, it's a godly principle. God says, I'll bless you. I'll stick that. I'll press down. And it'll run over if you give it. You want to see somebody's heart? There it is. I don't have credit cards. I tore my wallet through Dave Ramsey. The best thing I ever did in my life. Went through Dave Ramsey and I cut all my credit cards up. Me and Dana was like $10,000 in debt. And listen to what I did. I called him. I said, listen, I'm a preacher. I don't have a lot of money. I said, but I can give you $5,000. Will you take it? He says, is that a negotiation? I said, that's a negotiation. He took $5,000, I saved $5,000, I negotiated it, and I ripped that credit card up. And now, we don't have any. So watch this. You're like me. I know some of you are like me. You're sitting there going, well, I can handle it. Oh, really? If you're like me, I'd go through Kroger, and I'd say, Daniel, we're going to use a credit card. We're going to put our gas and our groceries. That's all we're going to put on it, gas and groceries. And I'll pay it off at the end of the month. How many of you ever made that lie? At the end of the month, you owe more than what you made. And then you say, well, blessed be the name, I'll just pay half of it this month, and I'll make up, I'll work overtime. And now the economy is busted and disgusted, and now you're sitting there going, oh, no. So now I played it smart. I've got a debit card. If you don't have money, you don't get no ching-ching. <laughs> you, know, you don't get no ching-ching, you know what I'm saying? You can go to the Mac all you want to, and Destiny, she's even, she says this. She says, Daddy, she said, take me to McDonald's. And I was like, Destiny ain't got no money. 
She said, go to that machine that spits out money. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No ting ting. You know what I'm saying? No ting ting. But what I'm saying is this tithes. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm tithing. Now listen, don't get mad at me. Listen, if you've got a problem, you go to God. If you don't like this kind of preaching, it's in the Bible. You've got to settle it up with God. Amen? And the reason why you're mad is because you don't tithe. If what I've done a study on this church, just this church, now listen, it's going to blow your mind. If just 300 people tithe, we got over 500 that come to this church, Casey. If just 300 families tithe on the average income that is based salaries that we make in, the, in, the, in Campbellsville, do you know how much our weekly offerings would be? No, I, I don't, I've done a study. I do study. $20,000 weekly twenty thousand dollars weekly have all right y'all i know some of y'all getting mad at me y'all going have i ever preached on tithes no huh it's about stinking time amen sister it's about time if you want to be blessed tithe if you want to be cursed and rob god keep your money yeah, I'm like that too. I, I had a bill come in for electric bill one time. And I promised me and Dana was tithing and tithing and tithing. And I said, there's no way I can pay this electric bill. And we had a check come through the mail. I'm not lying to you. It paid our electric bill and put 50 cents in my pocket. He said, Brian, what you do with that 50 cents? I bought a Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> I bought a Diet Mountain Dew. Yes, I did. You say, well, I don't know. What do you tithe on? The gross or the net? What did you make? Hey, the, oh, I'm preaching now. Y'all don't like You like this? Amen, amen. He, I don't think he would sit there and say, no, I don't. <laughs> but, but anyway, but here's the deal. The reason why the government takes their money first is because they don't trust you're going to pay them. God says, I give it all to you, but I trust you that you're going to give me my tenth. That's good. That's good. See, here's the deal. I can't wait till I get back up here one Sunday and say, Greg, guess how much offer we had one week? $20,000. Yeah. We're averaging right now 8500 Does that tell you a lot? And I know we got money in here because I passed some nice vehicles coming in. Y'all are driving stolen vehicles. You robbed God to buy a truck, and now, <laughs> and now <laughs> it's the truth. Am I, Daniel, am I preaching? It, Marcus, is this right? When it's right, it's tight. That's why they tight on. You know what I'm saying? It's right. You just listen. Don't believe the lies that we've told y'all. Don't believe the lies. How you work at Kroger? You, you need to tithe. He said, I do. I like that young man. I do. How old are you? Huh? 19. Lord, have mercy, Bobby. You remember them stories? We said, if you make $10, you give God a dollar. And I'm like, why? He owns it all anyway. How many of you ever used that lie on Jesus? What if I told you that God says you give to me, and the reason why, listen, listen, preach. The reason why God says he'll give back is to bless his church. See, God is not selfish, Howard. He says, you give to me, I'll give back. You give to him, he'll give back. The reason why, y'all listen to me, the reason why some of you are not blessed, fully blessed, is because you're robbing God. I told y'all. Jenda, I told y'all it's going to be tough, but I can take it out of the Bible. This is what God said. See, I'm trying to bless you. God said in Luke 6, 38, give, and to what? Be given. Unto who? You give? It's like this. You give to him, man. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Watch this. I'm afraid not to tithe now. I am because I, I'm like, man, Lord, if I don't tithe, I get shook up and shook down and messed up. Watch this. How many of y'all? Believe what I'm preaching here today. Yes, come on. How many of you has God, 
that's tithers. Has God ever robbed you and took away from you and not done what he said he would do? Now, you don't take my word. You take all these hundreds and hundreds of people's words. God will do exactly what he says he'll do. The Bible says, listen, it's Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all, bring all, bring all the tithes to what? The storehouse. The church in the Hebrew language is the storehouse. The Bible says bring your tithe to the storehouse, the church, and he says this word, test me. I love this. Daniel, this is the only time in the Bible that God says, I want you to test me. He says, you give to me, Blake, you give me your 10%, and I promise you. Plus, he said, I promise you. Let's settle this today. Y'all ready? This is good. I promise you. I will open the windows of heaven. And I will pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to even receive it. How many of y'all want that? Come on. How many of y'all want that? I'm trying to help you. Hallelujah. I'm glad I serve a God that loves me. I'm glad I serve a God that wants to prosper me. I'm glad I got a God that's not a hoarder, but he'll give back to me. Not just give a little back. Yeah, I'm going to have so much coach, my barn can't even hold it. And see, people say, well, I don't believe in prosperity. Well, stay broke. Stay broke. Stay down. Stay like you are. But I'm going to test the Lord. I'm going to test God. God says, Jim, you give it to me. If you make $10, a dollar of it goes to Jesus. If you make a dollar, 10 cents goes to Jesus. If you make a hundred, ten dollars goes to Jesus. I'm glad I serve a God that He wants to bless me this morning. And here's I'm gonna say something. I'm done. I want you guys to quit limiting God. Let me let me stick there just for a moment. Praise Him, y'all come. I want you guys to quit limiting God. Quit trying to put God in your box. Amen, preacher. God, you can't put him in a box. He owns the box. Hallelujah. You can't put God in a little section of your life. He owns your life. Hallelujah. Quit putting God in a box. Quit trying to say these things. Quit saying these words. Listen to this. It'll never change. It'll ne- I get so sick. Of people say, it'll never change. If that comes out of your mouth, I rebuke it and bind it by the authority of God in this house today. There'll be no negative spirit in this house. Woo! Fly, I'll fly away. Listen to me. Quit saying God don't love you. Quit saying God don't want to prosper you. Quit saying those things. Because listen to me. The Bible says in Proverbs that life and death lies within the power of the tongue. Whatever you're speaking, the devil will latch a hold of. He'll latch a hold of it. He'll latch a hold of it. I made my mind up as a young man. See, I became dangerous at a young age. I believe the Bible. You can ask people, you believe the Bible? When you start talking about tongues, they start cowering down. You, you start talking about that, 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 that God made a donkey talk? He did. Boy, we believe that the donkey will talk, but we don't believe that God can use a human being to speak in tongues. Isn't that amazing? What we do, we grab this Bible, and I want to tell you all something. I'm finished. And we try to make this Bible become like us. We try to grab this Bible and say, God, this is what you meant, and this is what I'm going to do. We try to make this Bible become like we are. And God right now, under the unction of God, through the Holy Spirit, God don't want, God, listen to me, we got to quit trying to make God be like us, and we got to start being like God. We got to go when God says that he wants to prosper you and bless you. To receive that, church. To receive that. That He wants to bless you and love you and prosper you. Receive that. This is what the Holy Spirit just told me. God, I praise you for this word. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever you criticize, you'll never get. 
That's a good word right there. Somebody write that down because I'm going to preach on that. Listen to me. If all you do is criticize healers, people who believe that they can lay hands upon the sick, you'll stay sick. Woo! If, if all you do is talk about people and blast people and gossip about people, God's not going to bless you. Can I preach? Thank you. And I, I love y'all so much. I want to tell I, I want you to get this. I wish I could just smack you with the Bible and make you get it. I'd have a smacking contest right now. I, I mean, I'd just like, bam, get them in the name of Jesus. Get them, Jesus. I wish I could take this Bible. And I, people say, well, not everybody believes it like you. Why? Why? Well, it, God just don't want to do it for me. Why? <laughs> I know what he wrote. God don't want nobody to die and go to hell. God don't want nobody to be broken, disgusted, and barely meeting their bills each month. God wants you to go to McDonald's today and buy a Big Mac. Hallelujah. Thank you, McDonald's. God wants to bless you, Nick. And watch this. I'm going to speak to young people. Y'all ain't out of it either. I'm going to ask you something just real quick. You need to pray for your spouse. Now, if y'all are acting up on a Friday night, God, you, you know why you won't be able to feel God on a Sunday? Because you let the devil in on a Friday. You've got to remain holy and pure. Right. Save yourself. Right. I mean that, Tony, with all my heart, man. Don't y'all dare let nobody... Cut you. Put a Bible between you. Say, you got to go through the blood before you get to me. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Save yourself, Jenna. Yeah. And I want, when I marry these kids, I'm telling you. And now I'm old enough where all my youth are coming back. Alicia and all my kids. And I'm sitting there going, I'm not that old. <laughs> yes, now she's got babies. And I'm sitting there going, what's going on? They found the key to marriage. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Listen. I really believe whatever you criticize, you'll never have. You'll never receive it. If all you talk about, well, them stinking people, all they talk about is money. Bad attitude. God talks about money more than he talks about hell. And I pray if I can listen to me. If God can use this old boy, just open your eyes just that much today, blessed be the name. Man, some of you need some hope in your life. If you're breathing here today, I don't care what you did last night. God's got you here for a reason. So, man, guys, listen to me. You've got to quit all that negative talk. You've got to stop it. And if I hear you talk negative, I'm going to say, for here, I'm going to say, I'm not listening. I'm just not listening. That's, watch this. That's not what God said. Allison, do you realize what God said about you? You're his daughter. He loves you. He wants you and Jimmy to make it. Y'all, right. right. y'all getting this word? The church has been too negative for too long. Some of you, money's not going to fix you. Money's not going to fix you. You could have a million dollars in your pocket right now. And it's not going to fix you. There's some things that money just can't fix. Money cannot fix that void. Hallelujah. In your heart right now. Money can't fix that hole in your heart that you've been trying to fill with drugs. Only thing that can fill that hole, hey, is Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can fill that void in your life. Is the word of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! 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 My God! Some of you are working yourself to death and you're not getting anywhere. You're like a hamster on a wheel. Feel this. Oh, you're moving. You're getting a paycheck. But here, the 
just fill a void. We're not really happy. We put a fake smile on. Oh, God loves you. He's got plans for you. Oh, hamster on a wheel. Just going back and forth. Back and forth. Say, one of these days, that old heart's going to give out. One of these days, watch me, everybody under my voice today will die. You are going to die. Some of you are closer to death than what you realize. God is counting on you. And God is counting on me. God is counting on Elkhorn. That people can look at us and say, wow, is that what a Christian really is? Is that what a Christian really is? I want what you got. I'm like old hamster on a wheel. Going, 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 going. Money, 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 money. Don't spend no time with your family. Running, 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 running. And you're tired. You're wore out. And you're not taking care of yourself. I got a pastor friend. He preached one night of the 13 nights of his, of his first cruise. His name is Pastor Eric Gilbert. Pastor Eric Gilbert used to weigh 250 pounds. He was like a linebacker, man. He, would, he, was, he was good at sports and athletics. His church was growing by leaps and bounds. Looked good. Looked so good. And he was working and working and working and trying to be Jesus to all people and to all things. Last time I looked at Eric Gilbert, he weighed 152 pounds. He said these words. He said, I'm killing myself. I am killing myself. And I looked at him, I said, what are you going to do about it? You are under the unction of God in this house today. If you have been listening to this sermon, I don't know if God is telling some of you to slow down. I don't know what God is speaking to your spirit right now. But some of you are so fascinated with the greenback, you are so complicated now. All you do is work. Now watch me. God wants you to work, but not a stinking hundred hours a week. Y'all hear this preacher? Y'all can be mad at me all you want. But I'm I'm telling you right now, one day, one day, you'll look at me and say, Brian, you're right. And see, the sad part about it is God's speaking to some of you, but thou shall not be moved. Good old hymnal song. I shall not be moved. God delights in prospering you, but watch this, watch this. Here it is, Jim. You've got to be a good manager of what he's given you. The man who had the one talent of $1,000, I could go on and I could speak some powerful words, but I'm not, because I respect him. He hid that money. Oh, hoarder. He needs to be on the show hoarder. He had dug a hole and put that $1,000 in the ground. I'm going to save it for a rainy day. Blessed be the name. And that man who had $5,000 went and traded Melanie and come back with $10,000. And guess what? He didn't have to dig a hole. A lot of Christians are digging holes. And you're putting all your money in the ground. And I'm sitting and telling you today under the unction of God, there's people lost and dying and going to hell. You better dig your treasure up while it's digging time. So I've said it. Father God, in Jesus' name.